Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggy. This is going to be BSL Hasu League, round of 32, group E. We got Urban going up against Too Sexy For You. Bottom right corner, we got Urban starting as the yellow Zerg. Upper left hand corner, we've got Too Sexy For You starting as the green, greenish, teal uh, Protoss. This is going to be on Polypoid and it should be a good match. I favor Urban overall. He's scouting upper right hand corner initially, it looks like. So it'll be cross positions. See how that plays out. Too Sexy's gone pretty deep, however, in previous seasons of Hasu League. And I think he's had deep... So I'm trying to think... Uh, Urban made it up into Gosu League and actually had a pretty good run overall. And he's one of the guys where I'm like... He's actually... Uh, he hasn't spoiled anything, but he said that he had good games, for sure. At least a good game that he remembered of note. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Too Sexy, strong player, if I recall. I'm trying to think if he got to a quarter or even a semi-final previously i think quarterfinal was his uh initial play but it looks like i think he's thinking about a forge first opener potentially because he's sending out he's not keeping the probe nearby we'll look for the probe timing to move out but it looks like he wants to get he, he immediately went scout after pylon which suggests to me rather than going for the double scout after dropping the forge he wants to make sure he gets a look at the front to know whether he can go nexus first or not and actually he might even go for Cross spawn Nexus first, which is a little bit crazy and risky, honestly, against any Zerg player. So there's the Forge. Yeah, now sending out that second, the second portion of the Double Scout. I've seen different variations on this where players will send it out after the Forge and then send two Scouts out from there uh, to be a little bit more economic about it. Unfortunately for him, Urban did open up Spawning Pool first. Ooh, not able to get a block, though. So at the very least, going to be able to confirm the spawning pool timing and the fact that it actually was an overpool we got that overlord sneaking out that direction the probe gonna cycle around not able to disrupt the hatchery at all but at cross position sexy should know that he can sneak expansion it should be able to sneak nexus and then cannon against all of this although he does want to keep that probe nearby so yeah there's dropping the nexus we'll have to wait for he goes for the can we do see it looks like the full complement of zerglings being produced initially and I kind of like that play off of this regardless, mostly, especially on larger maps like this, where there's a lot of options you can open up in play by eliminating that early scout. And it looks like some initial tackings and these Zerglings making their way across the drone, checking bottom left, going to work its way up. Is, well, never mind. I was going to be able to, I wanted to say, is going to be able to go ahead and move up and confirm that can. But upon seeing that front, I have to assume Urban knows that that cannon's being built. A little bit surprised that he didn't keep the Zerglings back or didn't draw them back after discovering that. Instead, wants to make sure they're out on the front. I think that is intelligent, actually, considering how long it's going to take this Overlord to get into the forward position to track any sort of Zealot movement. But he could have delayed that a little bit here, considering it, it's going to be a while before that first Zealot's out on the field. This probe, in the meantime, wandering up to make sure nothing snuck out and grabbed that third. But And the drone instead sneaking here to the 6 o'clock location. Actually, Urban getting feisty, managing a run by. So only a single probe there. And able to get three... I'm, I'm shocked he was able to pull that off. Another cannon being dropped and starting to tack away at the assimilator as well. The probe cycling back around is going to be able to confirm that there's another base at the 6 o'clock. But nice play on Urban to be able to sneak around. And he's going to be able to get some gas disruption on top of that a probe kill. So too sexy taking some economic damage, also getting some delayed mining time. He's not dedicating a lot of probes to engage these Zerglings, and as a result, he's allowing these Zerglings to rack up a lot of kills. And all of a sudden, Urban is actually even economically, and the Photon Cannon going to finish. Is, does that range? I think it might range this bottom Zergling, but I think the two top Zerglings are actually safe and can continue to wail away at that Assimilator. 7x score is still morphing in. Lair about halfway finished, so nice eyes, and a probe with gas all of a sudden going right back out, maybe to get some additional scouting information. It looks like the probes are able to salvage that assimilator, which is huge, but that was a big delay in gas overall. And Overlord going to be able to float up. Still no Zealot on the natural expansion. Urban with the worker lead. This is a fantastic position for him to start. We'll see what he shifts it into. Looks like he is going to go for a three hatch spire to start. He can fold it back into four, but at the same time, he could just go straight Mutalisk here and bowl over to Sexy. That Stargate is dropped, and that means there will be a Corsair out in time. 
Urban is going to go ahead and sack an Overlord. Surprised he actually... This could be a problem for him, actually. He's got two Overlords nearby, and that Corsair is out in the field. So he is going to need to build a Scourge first to get it on the forward front to salvage one of these Overlords at least. Because the second... And I think with the timing of all that, that'll how it work. I'm kind of surprised he didn't sack this Overlord in to get the scout, but having that second one out might turn into a supply block, so that potentially, we'll see what happens. So there is an opportunity to cycle back around, but he's got, that's two gas, only the single gateway, and he sees a Citadel of a Dune spotting, so he knows that this is more likely a Bisu-ish build, Dark Templar opener, although going to be off time and off tempo because of all that disruption earlier. We've got a fourth hatchery being dropped at the 6 o'clock location rather than usual SimCity location. It looks like he's setting up to grab it. I actually might have wanted to go for the fourth, get the Scourge out a little bit earlier. So not going to go for aggressive hostility here. First Corsair is out. And let's see if this Corsair... Yeah, this could be a, a big play here. It looks like it's going to wander out to get scouting information first. But will Urban be able to provide some defense after that. So the initial Scourge are out, and that should give him map control to actually save both Overlords here. A couple of Zerlings moving across. Too Sexy wants to get eyes. Needs to be careful to keep that Corsair alive, because at this stage, with the economy and the output that Urban has, he also has to be very, very careful that he maintains an air fleet. Just period. Oof, and loses that first Corsair. And at this stage, Urban is floating near 500 minerals. He could just build five Mutalisks and take Too Sexy to task here. Two, a second Photon Cannon morphing. He's still got no Photon Cannon defending that natural expansion, so that'd be completely exposed. Plus one weapons is going to finish, but he's only got the two Zealots there at the natural, and the Scourge kind of pocketing in between both areas, and this is not a lot of... This is just not a lot for Sexy at all. Urban with a supply lead, so in a very strong situation, dropping a 6 hatchery at the 6 o'clock location. He is producing some Mutalisks, at this stage. I don't think he need. Yeah, he doesn't need to SimCity at all here, but he's going to anyway, dropping the Hydralis Cavern on top of everything else. There we see two additional gateways, finally. Zerglings continuing to protrude forward a little bit. First Dark Templar will be there. Overlord coverage not in position to provide some assistance, but with the Mutalisks in flight, I don't know that the Dark Templar is going to help out all that much. Free Zergling kills, but uh, Overlord coverage, so... Plenty of defense here. Mutalisks finally making their way around. We have... Okay, now a cannon is up. But that's only one cannon. And the Mutalisks should be able to wipe that out. And there hasn't been... Okay, there has been continuous Corsair production. So that should be defended. But still, this is a heavy investment. here. Part of the reason things have moved away from the styles, you really do need to get kills with this. So Dark Templar moving into the 6 o'clock location. Overlord's going to spot it. Got a kill, but while that's happening, Urban going ahead and getting some additional damage. Dark Templar going to try to recycle around. Did he attack that? Yeah. Scourge landing on one of the Corsairs. Almost able to hit a second. It looks like a couple of them getting taken out. So going to draw back after that. The Dark Templar only got the one drone kill, and that was a heavy, heavy economic investment in all that DT tech for basically a single drone. That's not going to cut it. Now the Hydralisk is starting to take the field. Overlord speed's not that far from finished. Urban has a supply lead. And is yeah, he's fanning out the Zerglings just to make sure that it wasn't an additional base that was grabbed. Sexy's going to have his work cut out for him here, I'll tell you what. He does have five Corsairs. Didn't go for plus one weapon upgrade. He's going to have Sidestorm, but he's only got the single High Templar on the front right this second. And he needs some Miracle Storms. And he just doesn't have a lot to protect that High Templar from... The Mutalisks otherwise. The one nice thing is that Dark Templar might be able to disrupt an additional expansion potentially. If it can make its way out, might be able But uh, Urban already grabbing the 6 o'clock gas. Corsair's able to meet the Mutalisks. Small victory for Sexy right there. But right now, Urban in firm control. Overlord moving out. And now it's just the, a matter of getting the Hydralisks out on the field with the Overlords in sufficient numbers. And actually, yeah, I gotta say, a nice save on Urban, because there's a lot of Corsairs out here, and he's able to salvage it, and Too Sexy going a little bit too deep. Taking a lot of damage. Overlord's checking bottom left-hand corner. 
seeing that there's no Dark Templar there, going to move in that drone and grab that base. Dark Templar looks like it's on patrol maneuver between the mineral only and the 3 o'clock, potentially. Just walking back and forth. But now Hydel is starting to move out towards the forward position. We do have a massive amount of gateways. Urban still with the supply lead. Making his way towards Lurker Tech. And just going to play it macro-wise, it looks like. I think he recognized he, with the early maneuvers, in a strong economic lead. So he doesn't need to take any big risks. He doesn't even need to go for any sort of a aggressive maneuver for sealing. He just has to make sure that he keeps his territory and continues to drone up. And he's just going to be overwhelming and not too long. He's had the drone lead, or I should say the worker lead, for nearly the entire match. Which will transition into just more and more advantages as the game progresses. Plus one weapons finish, plus two weapons on the way. And Overlord moving its way out with the Mutalisks. Let's see if they find that Dark Templar. Should be on vision right there. Yeah, able to retarget. They're going to hunt that down from the air. And here's the problem for two sex. He can go ahead and grab the additional Nexus, assuming the Zergling allows him. This is the standoff. Maybe they become friends and it's a romance novel down the line, but it looks like not. The Dragoons are going to end it, so it's a tragedy. Sad. Romeo and Zergliet. Uh, but... The hatchery bottom left is already constructed. So this is three base, and Zerg usually wants to be one base ahead, and urmon has been one base ahead for quite some time, and is in a position where he can honestly grab the bottom left-hand corner with the map control he's about to have. Morphing a lot of lurkers. Mutalisks out in forward field withdrawing mid-map. Urmon a little bit late to respond, but he's got plenty to repel this attack. And Too Sexy only has plus one weapon, so he's actually down. As well. Ooh, gonna lose a lot of those Corsairs. Still gotta keep those Corsairs preserved against any sort of Zerg threat because eventually what can end up happening is, is they can just do that mech, that tech switch late in the game. And all of a sudden you have your base being overwhelmed and that single cannon no longer cuts it. But look at all this yellow. That's a, a lot urban already gonna go ahead and grab his mineral only on top of everything else he's got another gas here bottom left so that's a four gas zerg making his way to hive tech that is going to be a lot to contend with and that fourth nexus not even up so he was down in the fourth position and now a fifth hatchery is establishing plus down supply it's basically at this stage it's whenever urban feels comfortable moving out He's done a pretty good job of macroing behind this. I gotta give it to Sexy where he hasn't really missed a beat as far as his macro. But the thing is, is Urban has just been in the dominant position this entire time. And maybe a shuttle drop could equalize this. But I haven't even seen a robotics. Sorry, we got a robotics right there. But I haven't seen a, a shuttle or anything along those lines. Sexy looking for a fight somewhere mid-map. Urban just keeping the forces back right this second. We have the two observers alongside. Just needs to gather an A-move a lot of this. Looks like a few lurkers in the field. The Mule is diving in a little bit late. Empty side storms for Sexy. Needed to dump that on... Well, the follow-up side storm, not too bad. So getting a little bit of damage. But still losing a good amount of troops. And honestly, eating a lot of free damage to these lurkers as well. Urban, have, however, doesn't have all of these units hotkeyed up. And so was caught a little bit off guard. So still maintains the supply lead because he's still macroing behind this. But might have had an opportunity to wipe a Protoss army out. And it was on move command right there. Able to pick off a High Templar. Yeah, just needs to... He's got mass. He just needs to move it in gear. And unfortunately, because Urban giving opportunities for Sexy to get back in this. Just by not having his uh, army cohesive. But still able to pick off High Templar. He's still got a supply lead, which means he's ahead. But yeah, just having the... I think that's the perennial Zerg problem. Is, is like, okay, where's all my stuff? Uh, and honestly, I'm not sure that he was all too concerned about crushing that army. Nor, nor did he need to be. Because look at this. Six o'clock, all sorts of hatcheries. Macro hatcheries being dropped. Mineral only is held. I think he was fine. He's like, okay, if you want to poke at my perimeter, that's okay. As soon as you attack one of my bases, though, game on. Now I will move up and go ahead and crush your army. And that will effectively be game. Yeah, Sexy has lost everything. Down 20 supply. 
So yeah, more, I think that was, I'm just misreading where Urban was rather than attacking into anything, just wanting to play a little bit more passively. And again, so now he's up 30 supply as just massive saturation everywhere as far as drones. Although these, as I say that, these three drones are idle right there. But just going to sit back and absorb what he wants. Nidus Canal, Hive Tech up, Defiler Mound just about finished. Does he have a second evolution chamber? No second evolution chamber as of yet. Sorry, he does have the second evolution chamber at the 6 o'clock. So still wheeling those, re those uh, upgrades. Maintaining that, going for transport on top of everything else. And Sexy going to go ahead and grab his 12 o'clock. But again, this is kind of the, mm, this isn't going to help you out sort of situation. Because he grabbed that mineral only as the first thing. And again, Urban's still been up this entire time. And on top of that, these bases have been saturated. Are we going to see a Doom drop this game? That could be beautiful. Overlord spreading out absolutely everywhere to try to get a look at the situation. I think Urban still playing in a more like tactical alert mode rather than red alert mode because this Zergling has been undisturbed at the 9 o'clock as well as that top right. Beautiful vision on his part. You can see Sexy kind of in the dark as well. And the upgrades have been pretty phenomenal. On top of everything else, honestly, he could go to our Ultralisks aren't that great versus Protoss late game, particularly because of Archons and a lot of other issues. Or Mon now grabbing bottom left, just going straight macro, playing it very, very safe. Uh, as much as I like seeing Zerg crush their, like, just go ahead and pull the trigger and go for crushing maneuvers, this is like professional, I'm going to win games style that Urmon's going. He's near max. Grabbing the three o'clock has already got cut the the map in half, and he's just gonna wait until he knows he's like, okay, I've got mass and good luck from there before he dedicates. And I kind of, as much as I'm like, oh man, better broadcasts are more fun when they're just constant attack and action. This is like how you win games at this level. So kudos to him. Hydrolux moving up mid position, now starting to get in some engagement. He does need to have these units on attack move though, if he's going to go. Uh, with kind of these sneaky attack fours. He, that, if I'm going to criticize Urban a little bit here, it's the fact that a lot of the units have been donated for free in some of these engagements. But the thing is, is he's been able to afford to right this second. It's single side storm on that Lurker. Again, not going to be sufficient. That's a much better one. Dark Swarm now moving up. That's going to negate a lot of the Dragoons. And now swarming from behind to encapsulate the army. And so two sexy going to lose this entire army. Some nice side storms, though on the retreat but look at all that yell yeah i gotta call gg just because too much and urban gonna very comfortably take that match through some oppressive some nice early game run by and damage and then some oppressive macro to follow that up a quiet one but hope you guys enjoyed it regardless thanks for listening